Well, it is day 12 now in the jury selection process for the trial of the three men accused of murdering Ahmad Arbery in Brunswick, Georgia. He was shot in February last year as he ran down the road, his family saying that he was out for a jog. Travis McMichael, his father Gregory McMichael and their neighbor Roddy Bryan, who recorded cell phone video of the shooting are all charged with murder. Now the potential pool of jurors was whittled down in Glen County to 65 yesterday and from that group today they've been trying to select the 12 jurors and the four alternates who will be seated to determine the fate of these three men and our legal analyst Latoya Williams Shelton joins us tonight. Uh, Latoya, thank you for your time. I know you've been following this case uh, very closely and we saw today both the prosecution and the defense strike potential jurors and we saw some back and forth uh, the prosecution challenging the ra racial makeup of this jury. The defense wanting to strike 11 of the 12 black jurors on this panel of 65 potential jurors. So talk about what stood out to you today and this process of striking jurors. So, OK, listen, we, we finally got to where we wanted to be, right? We finally got to our number. Um, you've seen others excused for cause, other potential jurors excused for cause. Now we're in this striking process where the attorneys, the state or the defense can uh, strike uh, folks from the jury. However, you have the defense and also the state in this what we call a reverse best and challenge saying the strikes that you're you're um, doing against these black jurors uh, specifically are uh, not race neutral which is the requirement for the strike. So that's the state's uh, argument here today. And what I thought was really interesting was how when the defense was trying to, and this was as it relates to just one particular juror, but as the defense was trying to uh, give their background and their reasoning as to why this is a race neutral strike and it's not one based on race, the judge said, well, you know, I remember from your previous argument uh, uh, in this case as it relates to this particular juror that, you know, that was not the case. So this is not your strongest argument. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the judge interprets these um, and the objections to them um, moving forward. So striking jurors on the basis of race alone, that is illegal. Um, talk about the makeup of the jury and the impact that that could have on the outcome of this trial. You know, we're we're starting to. It's not like we're starting to see this. We're just starting to see this. It's been an issue before, and everyone has known that race is going to be a huge issue, right? So no side is going to be. Uh, the state is not going to be okay if there is not one black juror on this panel, right? Um, the defense is not going to be okay. They were already speaking about the fact that this jury doesn't look like a jury of their peers. So we've talked about how long this process has taken, but it just brings me back to what I've been saying all along, which is that it's an important process because the jury is who is going to decide this case. So they have to get it down to 12 jurors and four alternates. And then after that, that's when the opening statements will begin. What can we expect now in opening statements? You can expect for each of the sides, each parties to be laying out their foundation and their theory of this case. Opening statements is something that should, it's not the entire case, but it's the opportunity for me to open up and tell you, this is my theory of the case. If I was the state, this is my theory of the case. These are the charges that we've charged each of these defendants with. And this is the evidence that you're gonna see throughout this case that's going to make you come back with a verdict of guilty as it relates relates to the defense. This is our theory of the case. These are the charges that they're being charged with. These are this is the facts and the evidence that you're going to hear that's going to say that these these defendants are not guilty and why you should come back with a verdict of not guilty. So we should see a, a nice succinct argument and a foundation laid as to each side's theory of their case. And last question on um, this is such a high profile case. Do we know that once the jury is seated, will this jury uh, be sequestered? We don't know that. I have not heard that as of yet. We've heard uh, defense from the defense and the state as far as requesting it and as far as uh, reiterating to the judge that um, most of these jurors or most of the potential jurors has mentioned things about their um, safety and potential safety issues, but that is still something that is up to the court and I still have not heard the court um, provide a final decision on that. 
Latoya Williams Shelton, we thank you for analysis tonight. We will continue thank to you. watch this trial closely. We're streaming it gavel to gavel on our website, firstcoastnews.com, and also the First Coast News app.